Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're gonna be talking about why the Axe Six rewards are shit. I mean, you've probably seen some videos, but I want to show you like in all the videos I've seen, they haven't really shown like why it's bad. Like they say, it's like a lot harder and all that. But I'm just gonna show you some examples and shit. So if, before we do all that, let me just go over the rewards. You've already seen them all. I have it listed out. So I have the Axe Six rewards shown next to the Abyss rewards. So for doing all of Axe Six. Basically, the highlights of the all of Axe's completion and exploration put together is ten thousand six star shards, one five star four to five rank up gem crystal, one tier five cla ca class catalyst crystal, a six star awakening gem crystal, and then two more of the four to five rank up gem crystals. So, right off the bat, um, going. Doing all of Act 6 is a little bit better than doing, like, one Path of Abyss. Because if you do one Path of Abyss, you get double the 6-star shards, you get the same 6-star Wicked Gem Crystal, and you also get the same 1 Tier 5 CC. The only thing that has over it is a little bit more Tier 5 Basic, more, a little bit more Tier 2 Alpha, and then the 4-5 to five Rank of Gem Crystals. And it's like, 4-5 to five Rank of Gem Crystals at this state of the game, they're really good, obviously, they're really good in Rank 5 character, but it's like... At my stage, and then people way better, like, higher accounts than me, they got, like, 20, or at, like, 10, 20, someone's got 30 rank 5s, it's, like, not that big a deal, and I think one just quick way they could have spiced it up is, instead of doing 5 star 4 to 5 gem, because you get 3 in total, they could have done 3 6 star rank 1 to 2 gem crystals, that would have already just made it a lot more spicy, and then... The fact that we only get one six star we can enter crystal for exploring act six. And it's not like just your exploring act six. Because I get Abyss is supposed to be harder and give you the better rewards. But realistically, I'm going to say something that sounds like it shouldn't be said, but it should be. We should have gotten better rewards for act six than Abyss. Because I'm going to show you some reasons why act six was miles, miles, miles harder. Than Abyss. Abyss is not hard, okay? There's, some ch there's a few fights challenging in Abyss, but we're gonna get into that later. Right now, let's just finish going over the rewards. But, so you do all that, you get that stuff. But if you do Abyss, five paths, okay? You get. Sorry. You get about 65,000 six star shards, okay? You get the six star Arcane Gym Crystal. And the six star generic, okay, and you get three tier five CC, and then you also get from the five chests plus that, you get a hundred fifty six star six stone crystals. Which is another thing. Why were there no six stones in Act Six, like six star or five star? Like just we need six star or six stones. Like it's this late in the game. Like they're so stingy with the next level of power. It's amazing. We've been at rank five five stars for like two three years now something like that like a long time like this is like unbelievable how stingy they're being with it it's like blowing my mind and the fact that the act six ones random the tier five cc crystal if it was a selector it would be so much better because if it was a selector you know imagine you do all of act six okay and you've like spent so much time energy blood sweat and tears and you just really want Corvus to be ranked through, I guess. You need a Cosmic. And then say from Abyss, you got... You say you did already, already all the paths of Abyss before X6, which I wouldn't even blame you for doing since it's easier. Say from Abyss, you got like a one skill, two mutants, okay? Say so two mutants. You need you already need two six stars ranked three. That's already going to be a little bit of a challenge because you, you want to separate the classes. Imagine all the blood, sweat, and tears from exploring X6, from the one tier five CC crystal. Imagine you pulled another mutant. That would be so, so heartbreaking for the amount of like, and the argument for that is like act five, in act five, you got um, the tier five basic needed to rank five your first character and a six star generic, uh, five star generic. So you could pick which character you wanted to max out. And Act 6 should be the same. You should have been able to pick which character you want to take to rank 3 and awaken. Nope, they want to be super stingy with the rewards. And then, 
I get what some people are thinking. Yeah, but Abyss is supposed to be harder, so it makes sense that it's harder. I mean, better rewards for Abyss. Dude, I'm going to show you in a second some examples. Act 6 was so much harder than Abyss. Abyss, the only thing that made it annoying was the hit counter thing. But once we... But it's just... that's there's no, It's not difficult. It's just like... It's just a gate that says, fuck you, you die. So instead of taking one revive, this fight will take like three or four. It's like not that big a deal. It's a little annoying, obviously, yeah. But now, let's just jump into the game and just show some things that make Act 6 much harder than Abyss. Alright, now I'm hopping over to the game and I'm just going to go through some fights in Act 6 that... Okay. That'll just make it so much harder than Abyss. So first, you have it in Chapter 1. Chapter 1, arguably, not really arguably, it's just kind of obvious. It's like, it's not really arguable. It's the easiest chapter. And then, so you, you're doing it, say so you just get an Act 6. You've done the first four quests. Actually, before let's even talk about that, let's talk about the four-star ban. So right away, in certain fights, you might need Synergy Zone 4. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't recommend using four stars for Act 6 in the first place, just because the block damage is so high. But... Just the fact you can't bring them in for, like, synergies already makes it stupid. So you hop in, you do the first quest, second quest, third quest, fourth quest. Then you hop into the fifth quest, and you run into the first roadblock. Here, who are we going to bring? We'll bring in six-star Aegon rank two just to flex, just for these quests. Just so I can show you around a little bit. So, first roadblock. You get into this quest, you're all excited, reading the nodes, you see the boss, and then you're like, oh, what are the nodes, Eve? Oh, Biohazard and Vigor. Well, that seems like a problem. Especially that he has Bane on him, too, unless you do the Bane path. Hmm, Biohazard and Vigor. You know, if it was just Biohazard, or just Vigor, if it was just Biohazard, you could just see someone bleed immune and it'd be fine. But then you have Vigor, which every 15 seconds after the start, they generate 50% of their base, base health over 5 seconds, and it refreshes in intervals of 25% missing health. So most people have done this node before, they know how it works. But you need a bleed immune character... Because in Biohouse, you get bleed and poison, but as long as you're hitting their block, you won't get the poison. So you pretty much just need a bleed immune character who can out damage Vigor. I'm going to look at the bleed immune characters in the game. There's a few that can do it, but there's a lot of bleed immune characters that just can't. So already, this is the first roadblock in the game where character uh, you're going to be forced to have an extensive roster of some kind. If you walk into Act 6 with like a 6 star ghost, I mean, you'll be fine pretty much. But there's a lot more <laughs> to look out for. So that's pretty much like the one roadblock in X, um, chapter one. Now we go into chapter two and chapter three. The most, the, we're escalating difficulty by a lot. The next roadblock we're going to see is our boy, 6.2 Mr. Sinister. Everybody's favorite, okay? Everybody's favorite. What makes this guy fun, you ask? Oh, well, let me just tell you. It's EMP modification. So every time you get a buff, he'll get a charge and... Once he throws a special attack, he puts all uh, detonates all the chargers, and each charge turns into a shock passive. So that's important to know, so you can't use characters like Corvus or whatever. But, I mean, you wouldn't really want to use Corvus for this fight in the first place, but you know what I mean. So, right away, EMP mod is just going to do damage, because most characters are not shock immune. Then, you know, you could bring a shock immune, but then you might think, oh, wait, I can't do that, because there's a fun node called Caustic Temper. And you have a 50% chance when you hit them to get poison on yourself, so right away you need a poison immune character, somebody can deal with the poison in some way. And additionally on that, if that wasn't enough, fuck. Um, fuckery to go on. You need a Fury, and it, it has to be a buff, not a passive. So you can't use something like she Hall, which is stupid. But uh, if they don't have, if you don't have a Fury buff on you, you're taking 90% less damage. Isn't or they take 90% less damage. Isn't that so fun? So you need a character who's poison immune, has furies. And then, even if you have both those, you're going to just die from EMP mod. And it's Mr. Sinister. So, every time you crit, he just heals it back, which is more magical. And then, 6.2 also brings in this magical thing called a Gate. So, two Mystic 5 stars you need to bring in. One thing that I thought about that could have made Gate so much better is, five, is just class. Like, not, like, class and star. Because, for example... Um, let's just say, uh, there's no, like, good lanes for me, but let's just say, okay, let's just say I'm relying on the six-star Aegon right here. I need two skill. Oh, but they have to be five stars. So, five-star Aegon, you can't pin, or six-star Aegon, you can't pin the team because we need to get a five-star skill. Luckily for me, I have a five-star Aegon, but that's not the point. Some people, 
might have like a really good character for as a six star, but the gate says you need to use a five star, so you can't use them because you need to make more space for the team. And this is only two, so it's not that bad. But later in six point two, it gets to like four champions that really limits your options. On top of already needed very being a very limited fight, so this is another roadblock for most players. You don't have a ghost, Hyperion, Medusa. Those are like the three best characters off the top of my head. I think that are like can deal with this fight. Ghost full synergies, all the. So right away we run into another problem. And say you wanted to use the Heimzolt, Heimdall synergy and Angela or whatever to get the Fury, um, the four star ban. So say you would have just brought in the four star with synergy. Not you need the five star. Another restriction. So if you don't have those characters. Because other characters can do it with that synergy, like Quake, Blade, Captain America, Baby War. But you need the Fury, so you need the synergy. And if you don't have Heimdall or Angela as a 5-star, or 6-star, guess what? You can't do it. So, another roadblock you run into. Next, you go into the Mordo quest. Okay, so this quest is just bad. Like, For, like, two main reasons. One, okay, so basically this guy has... Um, a special two, a special one unblockable. He also has a special delivery. So if you're running suicides, not the most fun node to see. As somebody who runs suicides, I don't like this node. Then on top of that, you have this node, Hurt Locker. If you use the same special attack in a row, you take damage. So basically, you if you do take this guy fully noted, you need to have someone who has a little bit of power gain, ideally, because 15 hits, I don't know if that's enough, really, to go from a special one and then to do a special two or something like that. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying because you might take the Hurt Locker damage because you have to... And then he has this magical node called Spite, which everyone loves, obviously. And then this more magical node called Strength in Numbers. This node, just a cash grabs. So, basically, for every member in your team that's knocked out, so dead, um, your attacker suffers 25% attack and ability accuracy reduction. So, does that mean if you have... So, for example, you lose one character, you have four characters left. You lose 25% of your attack and 25% ability accuracy reduction. Which theoretically should mean if you have four champs dead, the fifth one won't be able to do any damage. And none of his abilities are proc. That's kind of weird. That's kind of stupid. Um, so yeah, this note is just a cash grab. And then on top of that, we have like these class gates. This is like the first time we really start seeing the bullshit. Because instead of two champs, you need four. So you're going to need to champion in these class gates. The six star So for this one, you need four six stars, this one you need four cosmic um, five stars, four tech five stars, four mutant um, five stars, plus a fifth character of your choosing, plus the fully noted up Mordo with that stupid node, plus these lands are not easy fights themselves. Like for example, let's just look at this fight. 80% critical resistance, regenerates 100% permanently, special attacks, for both characters cause 50% less power. Like, these nodes are, these lands are not easy lands. Plus, another thing I was forgot to mention, I, I don't know how I almost forgot to mention this, the global node, which makes this f lane, I mean, this cool quest is even more fun. Do not go gentle. Basically, every five hits in your combo mean you're gonna get a charge. And if you heavy attack, you can get rid of it. And if you intercept, you can get rid of two charges. And basically, if you were hit, to hit a killing blow on the enemy, okay? Say you have 10 charges on yourself, because you messed up. Um, when he would die, all 10 of the charges on him would detonate one by one and you explode. I mean, the charges on you. So say you have 10 charges, boom, 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 10 times until you're pretty much dead, because these charges hurt. So yeah, this whole chap, this whole uh, lane is, uh, quest is just not fun. It's another like, hard roadblock. It's a hard quest with the global node and everything. And then finally... You go to your boy, 6.2 champion. This guy, not fun. Not fun at all. Um, what makes this guy fun? Well, basically, every one of these um, things have links. So, prove yourself. That's just horrible. I just hate that node. This may not that big of a deal, but if you get hit, it's really annoying. This one, doesn't really matter. Magic's no retreat. So, when the da attacker dash back, um, like, twice... Um, you can take a T gen pretty much, so you need to like time your dash back. It's really annoying, and basically, plus the um, what are they called? The gate. You need to bring a specific roster, and when you do these paths, you're gonna have to leave some of these nodes active. So, say you want to take the science one, you're gonna need to be prepared to fight against no retreat or, say you do um, take this one. Uh, if you go around this path, all attacks are unblockable for the first six. It's not a big deal. This one, you go around the second path, bird of might. 
pretty much seems like an easy node, but with characters like Sim Supreme, it makes it really hard. Plus the linked paths. It's just... Plus the champion himself. I forgot to mention that. The champion himself. What makes this guy fun? This guy is really fun. He's powered by the Power Stone. And if you don't know anything about the champion by now, then you probably should, like, look it up, because... I don't know how you don't know about it yet. Basically, this fight is hell. Like, it's just not a fun fight. It's fun if you get it down, but it takes a lot of practice, and it's like a really big, really big roadblock for a lot of players because the amount of skill involved in this, and there's a lot of units that... Uh, sorry, I swiped it up. A lot of units might be involved trying to revive because this fight's extremely hard. Plus, you need um, only certain... There's not that many characters you can really take in because you need to be able to... Deal with this unstoppable, deal with the regen, deal with his phases, and deal with the final phase. So there's a lot of um, skill involved and a lot of like niche characters they can use. Like Symbio Supreme is one of the best options. She Hulk, Stealth Suit Spider Man. Plus, he's 500,000 health. You make one mistake, you get pretty much rammed. And th this whole quest is just a massive roadblock for getting 6.2 done for a lot of players. So, yeah. And then, one other thing I wanted to mention. Why why is this even a node? Like, do you bleed on Emma Frost? Rogue. Just terrible. Just I, I hated that node. I just wanted to throw that out there. Next, we go to 6.3. 6.3 introduces uh, the boost system. So, if it wants to load. So, an unlike, so they realize their mistakes from 6.2. Also, another thing about 6.2 is every quest had, like, 10 paths. That was just stupid. It should have 6, which... 6.3 did realize their lesson from, but from 6.2, uh, 6.3, they introduced boost, and this boost is kind of a cool system, but if you mess up with the boost, you only get really one of them, you'd have to either redo the whole path to get the boost again, or spend 15 to get another boost, which is kind of just annoying if you mess up, but 6.3 introduces a whole new line of roadblocks, one mainly this path, okay, so for... 6.3.1, we're gonna go through all six quests because all six quests have something magical about them in 6.3, I loved. Definitely would do this one over 6.2 though, just FYI, except there are some, ne so they took out the gates in 6.3, but they're still, but they're still basically gates because they made some of the nodes in past so niche, like take this one for example, okay, not that. Every person in this fight can't stop, won't stop. You're unstoppable. Buffs you gain and you have 100% um, longer duration. But if you don't have an unstoppable on you, they take 75% less damage. So basically, this path is just thing. If you don't have thing, I don't really know any good options for this path because each fight's like labyrinth, like abyss level long. If you don't have that, plus these fights are terrible. This guy you don't crit. This guy you take damage. This guy you take damage. This one's easy. This one's easy. Domino is domino. And then you get to this guy in the last, who also has the note on top of it, if it wasn't hard enough, Aspects of War, which is so fun. Plus, you get to this guy, who is arguably harder than the boss, if you fuck up the cycle. But he has the Life Cycle node, plus Limber, which is really an annoying, just a really annoying, um, just combo. It's really not good. And then you go to this girl. So basically, if you don't have, like, the best three I that come to mind is Warlock. Nick Fury, Sim Supreme, and what makes this one hard is 5% buffet, and it's like 500,000 health, so that's like a lot of regen, plus do you bleed, this node makes it extremely niche, you need a character who can do massive amounts of bleed, so, and try not to trigger too many buffs because of the buffet node, so basically the number one option for this fight is just Sim Supreme, he just rapes this fight, but even though Sim Supreme, once again, niche, it's just not fun, so... I'm gonna try to go a little faster because this video is almost over. Um, it's getting a little long. And if you're still watching, thank you. That's a pretty cool view. So, now we go into the second quest, the Nick Fury quest. And this quest, uh, I mean, none of the paths are too difficult except for this one. This path I hated. And this is another niche. This is like a node right here. Just just look at this node. They attack, If they throw a special attack, you get stunned every tour. 20 seconds, unless you're throwing a special attack, you get stunned. And biohazard. And the only way to deal with this is, what you notice, it's this one, right? You get this boost, and it only applies to tech characters, so you need a tech champ, basically. And what it says is, whenever you'll be bled or poisoned, but you're immune to it, so basically a robot, you become stun immune for 6 seconds. 
So you basically need a robot champion who can do this path. There's an annoying ass domino, and there's a stupid ass Iceman. So if you have a Warlock, that's pretty much the best option. If you don't have Warlock, not that fun of a path because so much can go wrong. So basically, you need to trigger the Biohazard to get the Stun Shield on you because if you're immune to it, you get the Stun Shield. But I, I was doing this path. There would be times where I would do like 15 hits. With the, I swear to God, 15 hits, and I would get the bleed, and I wouldn't get the stun, and I would just die from it. It was so annoying. And then this Iceman, I went in with my rank 4 5-star Ultron. I did this path with the rank 4 5-star Ultron. Dude, such a mistake. This guy just hit his initial Iceman ability to put the cold snap on you. I started that fight at 100%. Fully healed up. I was scared. And... Plus Ultron's regen phases at 15, 25. I finished the cold snap like phase in the beginning with 1% health. I wish I was recording, but I promise with the regen, it barely, I had 1%. That is so stupid. And that brings up another problem. With 6.3, it's a massive, massive, massive jump from health to attack from 6.2. 6.2, they're like 200,000, 150,000. This one's 250 to 300,000. So characters like Corvus or Omega had a pretty difficult time. Plus their attack. One block, if you don't get the parry, could be like a few thousand damage. And it's just not fun. Then we go on to the final boss, Nick Fury. Nick Fury is just already annoying Defender out as it is, as we all know, because the unblockableness. So this one's fully debuff immune, so no Archangel. And powered immunity, which is like the only way you can really get an easy one shot that I know of. So basically, anytime they get a debuff, they're immune to, they generate 33% of a bar of power. So basically, since they're immune to all debuffs, any debuff gives them 33% of a bar of power. The best option, I think, is Sunspot. I'm thankful to have a rank 5 Sunspot, 5 star, but if you don't have a Sunspot, this fight's going to be pretty difficult. Because with Sunspot, you could just do a 5 combo, and you'd already be at a special 2 because of all the power gain. So you never have to evade a special 1. But this one's just a stamina fight. So this is another niche fight. If you don't have Sunspot or some other character that can deal with it, it's quite difficult. So, this video's getting long. We're at 22 and a half minutes. Um, props if you're still here. Now we go to Chapter 3. And this fight, or uh, Quest 3. This fight, this quest has a fight that pissed off so many people. So pretty much all the paths. Not that bad. Pretty easy pass, honestly. Then you get to this magical, magical, magical fight that made me want to kill myself. Acid Wash Mysterio. You're thinking, Acid Wash? Pretty much you just need a poison, right? That's If you have a poison and they don't do it, you do more damage. It's whatever. There's a lot of characters who can do poison. And then you remember, uh, Mysterio's a champion who can only, is poison immune until his helmet's broken when he's armor broken. So you need a character, and you do 90% less damage if you don't have the poison on him. You need a character who can armor break and put poison. There's two in the game. Man Thing and King Groot. No one ranks up King Groot, so it's pretty much just Man Thing. You can do it this way with King Groot, but Man Thing works a lot better. So pretty much your only option is King Groot and Man Thing. That's two counters to this fight. You don't have either of those characters, suck it up. It's gonna be a fucking abyss level fight. 5.7 million health, because you do no damage. And, and on top of it, it's fucking Mysterio. And Mysterio is the most annoying character to fight. Why is he annoying? Because when he throws a special one, you can't do any damage to him. Or else you take it back. So you just have to wait. And if he throws a special two, he can be missed. And you miss your checks and he just counters and kills you. So this fight, really not fun. I had a man thing. I only had him at rank two. That was the worst decision of my life to not rank him up. So that fight was cancer, okay? And then you go into this final uh, Havoc boss. And you might think it'd be a super bad, but this Havoc boss honestly isn't that much of a problem. Because he has improved power gain. So basically, I used Ghost, which sounds like a terrible option, but you can just keep pushing them to the special threes and just tank them with full Ghost energies. It's pretty easy, actually. So this fight wasn't that bad, but just that Mysterio was like ruined that quest for everyone because that fight was just terrible. Now we move on to the fourth one. And the fourth one, really not that hard. I mean, you need pretty much a good counter for this path. This path is do not go gentle and buffet and power gain by 200% and with a Korg on it, Mr. Sinister. So this path, pretty much you just want Captain America Infinity War. So it's a pretty niche path, but it's not. There's a few other characters that can do it. But this one has this 
500,000 Iron Man Infinity War, then improved power gain, arc overload, and your power strain every 30 seconds. So this quest isn't that bad, but the final boss is pretty hard, and then that lane is also pretty niche. So this one's like probably the easiest out of all of them, which is kind of surprising, but then you enter this Mysterio path, the fifth quest. So this one's very fun, as many of you know. And if you want the easy path, just take this one. It's just aggression armor. There's not much of armor. So this is Corvus food path. But what makes this uh, quest so fun and interactive? Well, for one, this path has rage. Rage, terrible note, all in all. It wasn't that bad of a path, though. I did it with Quake. It was pretty easy. This path seems it could be fun, because they don't take any damage unless you then incinerate. But you have a 20% chance to incinerate on them. And then none, none of your special uh, attacks do damage. No, none of your attacks do damage except for your special attacks. So it's like power shield, so it's pretty fun to just like just destroy with like massive hard hitters. I thought it was an easy path. I got this dumbass fight that whoever invented this fight actually kill yourself because you only do damage when you special, but thing every time you specialed got his protection shield. It was so annoying. This fight would took so long. This fight, cancer, absolute cancer. Ever did that fight is cancer. This path, also cancer. It's a long distance relationship with cramping and small arms. So your heavy attacks, no damage. And then if you have a weakness debuff on you, if you were to hit them with the weakness from the long distance relationship from this node, you take damage. You take a shit ton of damage. So it's a stupid node. It's really terrible, honestly. Um, I used um, some advice for anyone who wants to know how to do this path. I think it's this one. You get it from the last quest, the Iron Infinity War. Don't use that boost in that quest because you don't really need it. There's a lot of other ways you can save it for this quest. So it's every 10 hits, you get a debuff immunity shield for 8 seconds. And I used Aegon for it, but it was still kind of annoying at times. But that quest, that would have those fun. Um, this one's Caustic Temper, Eternal Velocity, Spiked Armor, but with the boost, it's not that bad. And then this one's, they only take 1%. They have clap back corner. That one's kind of annoying. It's just kind of a stamina on them. And then what makes it fun and interactive as normal? Another Mysterio that's a pain in the ass. What makes him a pain in the ass? He has tunnel vision. And that's it. He's Mysterio with tunnel vision. Tunnel vision is you can't do the same attack two times in a row where you miss. So it needs to be like medium light medium. Or and this it did not even just for attacks. It could be like swiping back. You can't do anything two times in a row or you get missed. And this fight is just annoying. Just because the attack is so high. Both of his specials are annoying as shit. He's Mysterio, the matter, it's just not a fun, this, this boss was probably the worst one in all of 6.3, um, and then, you go to the final quest, the Captain America quest, in this one, none of the paths are too difficult, really, if you have the right counters, if you have the right counters, none of them are too difficult, but the final boss, he's, if you have the good counter, which is Ghost, He's easy one shot. If you don't have ghost, which a lot of people don't have ghost, you are fucked. Because um, he only takes damage with crits, but then it's Captain America Infinity War, so he glances some of your crits. Destructive feedback, which is when he has the yellow shield, you can't do any damage to him, and stores it all, and at the end of it, it'll do the damage to him, but this node is glitched, and it doesn't do the damage to him, so you just don't do damage in this phase at all. And if you get hit while, if you get hit in the block or hit it all with it, you take all the damage that's stored up, so you just die. Then, use the special attacks in order from 1 to 3. So use the special 1, special 2, then special 3. Full ghost synergies, you can just keep tanking the special 3, not a problem. You crit every hit, whatever. It's ghost. If you don't have ghost, I really don't know what to tell you. This boss probably is just really terrible if it's ghost. So, with all that said, this is a long ass video. I'm so sorry. We haven't even seen Chapter 4. Actually, scratch that. I saw Chapter 4 in the beta. Chapter 4 looked relatively easy, except for two paths. All the bosses looked easy, except for the Grandmaster, which you haven't seen. But there was two paths. One, you don't do any damage unless you have a prowess on you, and only with your special attacks it does damage. So only your special attacks with the prowess can do damage. Without that, you just do no damage, and it's basically like an abyss fight. Terrible. And I remember that path having some of the worst defenders on it too, which is even more fun. And then there's another node, which is, um, what's it called? You don't do any damage unless they have a power sting. That's even worse than the prowess one. Because the only character that comes to mind is like Emma Frost in Yellow Jacket. If you have a Mr. Fantastic, you can do full synergies. But I don't have a Mr. Fantastic as 5 or 6 star, and you probably don't either, because he's a very new character. 
unless you spend money, then in which case you're just laughing, it's not a big deal. Those two lanes seem like they're gonna be like the bullshit lanes of 6.4, but I remember 6.4 having lower attack and lower health than 6.3, so it should relatively be easier just for completion, but we haven't seen the Grand Master fight, and his nodes, his abilities were leaked a few months ago, and he looks harder than any other fight in the game. Looks like a lot's gonna be going on. With all that being said, it's been 30 minutes. With all that being said, Act 6 rewards are so unrewarding. I just gave you so many niche and hard fights of all of six point, um, Act 6. And then for Abyss, you just need Aegon and a strong Mystic, pretty much. And, like, Human Torch. That's, like, three characters, okay? And the fight you need Human Torch for, you can use, like, a four-star for. It's, like, not even, like, hard. Like, Abyss is so much easier with so much other rewards, it blows my mind. The difficulty for Act 6 is so much harder. The rewards should have been so much more bumped up. The amount of units you're going to be using on Abyss is just not near 6 point Act 6. Act 6 just has... And, I, and one another thing about Abyss that makes it easier is the attack is so low. Like, you can take, like, 20 hits and just still be alive, pretty much. That's how weak these fights are. So, in Act 6, you take one block hit. That's 50% of your health. So, yeah, with all that being said, we haven't even seen Act 4, uh, Chapter 4 yet. This is not fair. Like, there needs to be so many better rewards. So, I just gave you a 30-minute, 30 32-minute video on why the rewards need to be buff. If you agree with me, drop me a like. If you've been watching the whole time, comment your favorite color. So I know you've watched the whole time. And if you watched the whole time, then good job. Because I, that's a long video. I don't blame you if you didn't watch the whole thing. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Get a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.